Am I live? Oh my goodness. I am so sorry that that took me a minute. It's my first YouTube live, guys. So, hello. How does this work? How do you... Are there people here? Oh, wait. <laughs> Is this... Okay, it says, hi, guys. We can do... A chat, right? What is these little things on here? Good evening. Oh, hello. Oh my gosh. Hi. Good evening. Can you guys hear me okay? I feel like I have things under. Hello. Oh my gosh. So guys, I never did a YouTube um, live before. Oh, thank you so much. Hi. According to Zone. Thank you. Thank you so much to According to Zone. Thank you, Demetria. Okay, you guys can hear me. Y'all, I honestly thank you guys for even tuning in. My first live on YouTube. I tech, I typically go on Instagram live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And I've ran into a few of y'all from the cookie community. <laughs> and y'all actually told me that... Um, I had like thoughts in my mind. I was like, should I do YouTube lives? And when I met some of y'all in person, y'all were like, yes, I think you should definitely do YouTube live. Let's let's have a go at it. Let's see how it how it feels. And I was like, all right. And truth be told, y'all, my my week was very busy last week, like overwhelmingly busy in a great way. Like it's it's one thing to be busy, and then there's another thing to be like, girl, you ain't doing nothing but looking busy, right? But no, I was busy and productive. And I did not have a video for today. And I was like, I don't want to skip having something to connect with y'all on a Sunday. That's usually my posting day. And I was like, well, let me go live with the people and see what it feels like and what y'all doing and what's going on, what's on your minds, what are the things that y'all are into. And if y'all are doing okay. And it's so strange because it's like I'm talking, I'm talking to my, I only see my face but I don't see y'all and I can only see the names in the, the, um, the chat, but yeah. Why do y'all like YouTube? Can I ask y'all that? Cause I feel like this community is very different from the Instagram community and TikTok community, which I'm still not that great in understanding that platform. Like I post on there, but I don't really know the demographic or what people really want to see. You prefer long form content. So the, oh, I, 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 I'm recognizing these names. Hello from, hello London, the sweetheart, the sweetheart. I've noticed your name, you comment often. So long form co content and you guys, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. I have my little, um, I hope it's charged long enough. My little light. Um, the pace is slower. You guys like longer videos. So I'm curious about the long, thank you so much. And this is from Zara. If y'all want to know, I got this. It's it's a onesie. I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm wearing. Hold on. I'm my laptop sitting in. I have my onesie on <laughs> and I have my pants. <laughs> this is so funny. Wait, I have my pants from awake mode. They're pretty, they're pretty old. I think I got them on sale and I got this thing from Amazon, y'all. It's supposed to be a sit down vanity and assembly is, a quiet, is required. And I'm not excited about that. And probably Carlos isn't either because he's going to have to help me. But um, regarding long form content, a lot of the people I like to watch on YouTube, I've been noticing that they've been doing either 15 to 30 minute videos. And I feel like I do a mix, but like, what do y'all prefer? Do y'all want hour long content or, you know, is 15, 30 minutes a good sweet spot? Um, hi from Alexandria, Virginia. Oh, thank you. There's a myriad of content from which to draw inspiration. Also, I like longer videos. Okay. Better connection on YouTube. I do feel like it's um, like we're able to communicate and, and connect a lot differently over here. I do I do get what you mean by that, Angela Allen. Um, the structure. The Nella the Netherlands are in the house. Hello. Who the Oh my God. Hello. Y'all know my family's like Dutch, right? 
my mom's side of family is from Aruba and um, it's a Dutch Antilly. It's owned by the Netherlands. So a lot of times people that are living or born in um, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, the ABC Islands, a lot of them finish their studies or go to school in the Netherlands. Um, a lot of my cousins went to school in Holland and I have a lot of family in Holland. So come on, Netherlands, you up late? It's a little late, huh, Jace? Um, but I love it. Thank you. Yes, the lighting. That, yes, the lighting is like, listen, I got this little thing off Amazon, y'all. It looks like a, a little phone, but thicker. Um, oh, yeah. Yes, YouTube Live. Oh, my goodness. I told y'all. Yes. So I met her in person in real life last week, right? I told y'all, I was, like, I was thinking about it and I wanted to do a live and I told you. And girl, I didn't even have a video for this this Sunday. I've been overwhelmed by projects and I... I am doing vlogging, but I wanted to do like the month long one that I did. And I didn't want to produce anything that felt um, rushed or short. So I was like, you know what, Consider I don't have anything to post today, let me go live with you guys. Um, hello from Brooklyn. What's up, Renee? Uh, 15 minutes, an hour is too long. And I see that you skip through the content when it's that long. Okay. You prefer 30 minutes plus. 30 minutes is good. Okay. I figured that. I fi I figured sometimes longer, you you love long, super long videos. One of the reasons I like people, Monroe, Aaliyah, Aaliyah's face, Peyton. I don't I don't know the name Peyton, but I know Aaliyah, um, Aaliyah's face and um Monroe. Monroe does really good vlogs that are hour long and some change. I like when um people go abroad and I get to watch their their um, vlogging. I think 30 minutes. Is, okay. Okay. Good. Hello. Hi from London. Again, we got some, listen, I do notice that I have a very large um, demographic of people on, on Instagram and on TikTok, as well as here from London and the Netherlands. I love that. I have a bunch of family over there, y'all. I have a lot of family in Wilsden and Tottenham. Um, but 45 minutes is your sweet spot. But honestly, as long as it's authentic, I get that. Totally understand what you mean. Um, okay, for vlogs, I prefer longer content for informational purposes. Maybe, I, yo, if it's long, if any type of instructional video is longer than fifteen minutes, I'm over it. I'm like, give me the details. I need the direct answer. Skip all the nonsense. So totally understand that. Oh, thank you from South California. What's up, Kim? Okay, it's good to know because I mean, I um. Obviously, I'm going to make content that is convenient for the lifestyle that I have. And it's so funny. Tomorrow, I'm actually teaching a content and marketing class to my boyfriend's agent. My boyfriend is a real estate broker, and he wants me to go in and just talk to his team about how to use content and marketing. And, you know, I just feel like, oh, wait, in a Ruba vlog would be everything. I do want to go home. And my, why did my mother tell me? She was like, oh, I'm going to Aruba in February and didn't even ask if I wanted to go. Like, squeeze me, mother. So I might tag along with her in February so we can get that vlog together. Oh, thank you. I like YouTube because with the, you like YouTube because with the premium account, you can listen and not have to be in the application. So it's kind of like a podcast. Oh, I, okay. As you have to be in the application. That is true. Because when you, you can swap out and still have it. Yep. Yep. Oh, thank you. You know what, guys? My skin underneath the makeup, I have so much new hyperpigmentation and I know exactly what I did wrong. I had so much sugar during the month of September because that's my birthday month. So at my birthday party, I kept like sneaking away little pieces of cake. That cake was so good. It's by this lady called um, Dough Girl in Brooklyn, New York. And I kept like sneaking away cake and hiding it. So I had like seven pieces of cake after my birthday and was eating it, freezing it, all the things. Say hi, Carlos. Oh, hello. <laughs> so I feel like we had so much sugar and my skin is like purging it now. And now I have all these spots. But um. Yo, I can't. Like, I'm thank you, but I am starting over underneath this makeup. 
Is there anything you're coveting for holiday season? Yeah. So, you know, I, I want to make sure whenever I'm making content that it goes along with my actual life schedule. So it's one, easier to make the content in real time. And two, like I, I feel that living in New York for 17 years, I'm a little jaded because I live here. But when you don't live here and you see the lifestyle of New York of being fast paced and all the things that we get into, like I know it's an interesting thing. So I feel that creating content has allowed me to fall back in love with New York overall and showing that and sharing that. And even knowing people from like Baltimore where I grew up and, you know, my family that's, you know, overseas and stuff, I think them seeing a glimpse of what my day to day would look like. I think people love that. And it's like, you may not be able to get here in New York to experience the things, but you can, you can see through my eyes, I guess. Right. And that's why last video, I was like, I want to do a very thorough um, walkthrough of the Brooklyn Museum. Was it the Brooklyn? Yeah. The Brooklyn Museum where they had the Africa fashion exhibit because it's end, it ended. And I'm like, if you guys can't get here before it ends, I want to show y'all. And a lot of y'all really like that part. Even my dad said something about it. He's like, oh my God, I love the museum part. So, you know, it has to make sense. So for the holiday season, I want to do, I have a lot of events that I've been invited to, you know, which is pretty cool. Because this time last year, my content life was not what it looks like right now. Like I was kind of questioning if I should even do this because it felt so foreign and like I felt kind of like isolated and everything is super clicky within like the content creation space. And, it, and, and you, you just got to navigate through it. So last year, you know, I was trying to figure out what am I going to do when I'm going to do, but obviously, you know, covering holiday shopping and like things in different price tiers, considering the fact that inflation is real and we are all going through financial things. Like I want to be mindful of different tiers um, I want to show the events that I'm going to. I want to show some more family connections, um, just things of that nature. But for holiday season, what do you guys typically like to see? Because now, now that we're here, let's gauge a little bit. Like, what do you actually want to see for the holiday? Like, what 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 annoys you? during the holiday season. Cause that, I don't want to do, I don't want to do that. Like I want to do what I want to do, but I also don't want to be annoying. If that makes sense. Like I'll try to stay away from y'all triggers. Cause um, you find lengthy fashion videos have too much filler content. I don't even watch anymore. It plays in the background. I just click into the tab when I want to see what they're talking about. I've done that myself too. I'm not going to lie to you. I've been like, you know what? I just want to see what they bought. Ooh, I'll get that. You know what I mean? So you would love an Aruba vlog. I'm planning to go there for your 50th. Yes. Oh, listen. What do you mean? But the video did you in. Oh, uh, what, what, wait. So you're not going to your 50th? What do you mean? Yes, yeah, seven pieces of cake. I'm not ashamed. My face is a little upset, but I'm not ashamed. So d details on the rings. I have rings are like a personal journey, you know, like you go to different stores, you find vintage pieces, you're gifted some things, right? But I will tell you guys, so um, these three actually are from the same designer named Aziza Handcrafted. Let me, I could write in here, right? Yeah, Aziza Handcrafted. Those are the fingertips, but just as a warning, this designer is going more into the realm of using more gems and finer jewelry, but she does have these things available on her website, plus some other things. Um, but she's changing her trajectory a little bit, just so you have a heads up. Um, and she has silver, brass, and gold. Um, this one is from the same designer, uh, Wahadun NYC. She is... Israeli Muslim living in New York. I think we've known each other for like 20 plus years at this point, right? Um, but Ranin is an old friend of mine and she is a jewelry designer. And this collection was inspired off of Bugs, which is really cool. Her jewelry is phenomenal as well. And oh, you know what? I have one more ring from Aziza. 
This is another ring from Aziza. It's pretty dope. And this ring is a, a vintage ring with the little diamonds in there. And then this ring is actually, it's so, my mom is always so scared I'm going to cut my finger on this. This was actually my grandmother's ring that my grandmother had dementia and she had broken a lot of her jewelry pieces or hid a lot of her jewelry pieces around my auntie's home or her, her own home. And everything was kind of like in shambles after her passing, like as far as her jewelry pieces. And this was one of the only things we can, I, I, I mean, there's so many girls in our family. So like we all got a little something. So this is the one piece that I got and it's missing a little gem, but I love it that I don't want to fix it. I don't want to feel it. I feel like that was part of her experience wearing the ring, but I wear this ring all the time. And I wear this stack. Um, wait, let me see. You're watching that now. Cool. Thank you for the museum. I'm glad you stuck with this. Thank you. I'm from Brooklyn, but live elsewhere. Your vlogs make me homesick, but I enjoy my, my peace and country life too. A lot of people have moved down south. My uncle, who was born and raised Brooklyn, motorcycle gang, he was like always out in these streets. Like he just moved to North Carolina and I'm like, you moved to North Carolina, but he looks so happy down there. So I'm happy for her. I'm happy for the peace and all the things. I'm from Maryland, so a bit slower pace, so I need a little bit more grit in city life. Philly John, you're in the mix now. Enjoy the Dylan look. Thank you. Yes, I had a lot of fun. And I'm actually, I just worked with them last week for a photo shoot um, that I'm a part of one of their upcoming campaigns. I'm really excited to see what it looks like because it was all shot on film. You didn't see anything in the flesh. Um but yes, thank you so much. Uh, I enjoy the, uh, you hate advent calendar unboxings. I I don't, I've never done one of those. I don't even know. I, don't, I never had an advent calendar before. I think if anything, I would like, if I were to get an advent calendar, because I do see a lot of content creators receive them for Christmas time, I will probably go through the whole thing and tell you if it's worth purchasing as a gift. <laughs> Like, I would skip the days. I'd be like, nah, y'all, this ain't it. Or it's cute. I think y'all should get this for X, Y, Z type of person. That's probably the only thing I would do with the advent calendars. Child, don't buy. I will not remember to do that every day. That's, I, I, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm not there. So I get that. Uh, seconded. I, okay, good. Your content has helped me style and appreciation and love for the body. Thank you. That's good. Good. Gift giving recommendations would be helpful. Oh, hi from Baltimore. Okay, Carla. All right, so gift giving re recommendations for like different types of people, right? For like the yoga lover or a basketball lover, male, female, people who are third gender. Okay, okay. Mm, I, all the things. Um, uh, I like fashion events and di dinner outings. Okay, cool. The initial necklace. Oh, this is... Carlos and I both have this. He got this made for us. Excuse, excuse my volume. Babe. Yeah. What's the name of the designer that made our necklace? Oh, Benny the Jeweler. Benny the Jeweler from Queens? Yeah, Queens. From Queens. Queens. Benny the Jeweler from Queens. He got it uh, made for us five years ago, six years ago. Um, but yes, we both have the same initials. Um, 23 o'clock here. I'm from Suriname, South America. And there we speak. Yes, there is a lot of people from Suriname. Yes, that's so cool. You know, I found a creator. Um, Her name is like Thelis or something. Thelis? She's from Curacao and she's doing very well as a consequence. I was very happy to find her. And when she speaks, she sounds just like my cousins. And it's very soothing watching her videos. And she's very much like a minimalist type of creator. But I, I do love that. I just, it makes me feel like I'm hanging out with my cousin and I watch her. I love jewelry. Are you a jewelry minimalist or maximalist? Honestly, I don't know. Because I wear the same pieces consistently, unless there's like a big event that I'm going to, then I'll mix it up. But I always wear the same. Y'all, I got my ear pierced like over a year ago. And this is the piece that they use. I have not taken it out. I need to go get some jewelry. Huh? I need to I need to jazz it up a little bit. I'm I need to add a couple layers. I don't I don't I think I'm a minimalist. That's a minimalist, right? According to Zorn. 
it would be cool to see how you help some of your clients with closet edits. I can do that. I'm going to get approval from the next client, which will be my last in-person client that I'm taking like new people um, because of the holiday season coming up. It's, it's a lot of money for travel expenses. And then also, you know, just safety precautions. I don't always know who's home I'm going to. So any new inquiry for style advisement, if they need a wardrobe edit, it's going to have to go um, virtually and any of the clients that I've had prior to October, then I will revisit their homes because obviously now I know them, you know what I mean? But I will ask the next edit that I have, which is later this month in person, if she's okay with us showing the edit process. Because also I, I have to respect that they are not you know, they don't want to show their face. And like during edits, I require clients to wear like body suits so they can slip clothes on and off. So I'm like, why are we keeping this? Or how does this piece fit me, fit you? Let me see what it's giving. So, you know, there's a lot, they're a little bit more exposed in that type of thing, but I can figure out a way to work with my next client if she's okay with me doing that. Um, and if not, then I'm going to use one of my friends and we're going to do their closet and then they can't tell me no. <laughs> But um, we could do that. We could we could figure that out. Um, I'm a jewelry stand, especially fine jewelry. So I love to see any jewelry content. If you want to do more, like y'all, and my Wonder Woman, <laughs> Wakanda forever. I feel you. Okay, and I I am learning more about jewelry. I'm working with Concept Twenty Six as well, which is a fine jewelry brand, brand black owned. Um, I'll take y'all with me when we go see her for our photo shoot next weekend. So we'll like to see fashion events, lifestyle, and outings. Okay, good. Fellow Marylander here. I'm so happy to see you flourishing in New York. Thank you, Curvy. Sophisticate. To sophisticate. Is that, did I say it right? I'm going, y'all remember last time I, well, maybe not everyone saw it, but I did a video where I was showing what I would be wearing for the week. And one of those videos I was supposed to go home and I did not go home that weekend. I was so overwhelmed with work and then something happened. I just wasn't feeling it, like taking the trip down there, but I will be going home for my cousin's, my little cousin's birthday party and to see my family. But going home, I don't know, it's been difficult to like schedule the time in between this work, my client work, Noir, but it's just so much. I'm really, I, I feel homesick. I do miss home so much. So I really want to go. I'll definitely be home for Christmas. So, but I would like to get there before then. Um, you're like, no, listen, I, there's a, I can save this, right? And, and post it. Do y'all know how this works? Because I definitely don't. Um, wait, folks, don't forget to like the video. Oh, you can like this video? Oh, you can like this video. Okay, cool. Thank you. I, I love how you get the meat and the bones of that. Listen, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to explain all the things as best as you can. Oh, you're also from Serena. Oh my gosh. That is so cool, guys. Wow. All right. That, that, that how did, I don't know. How to, I need to remember how she says her name in the first place. How about listen, Carolyn, when she opens the video to learn how to say her name, but that is her name. Yes, that's exactly how you spell it. I love the minimalist look with a twist of sass. How would you describe your style? I feel like my style is very much evolving. You know, as I get older, I don't like fussy things. I don't like um, things that I have to continuously like iron and remanage and like just I'm always shifting and, and, and moving things around. So I do like a bit of ease and effortless to what I wear. I do love statement pieces and I love, I love really good tailoring. So I don't really know if I can categorize if it's like boho chic or anything. I feel that I do love a good, timeless, elegant um, piece, statement piece. I like comfort. And I like a bit of drapery, like I like a bit of dramatic edge, like a long sleeve or like a little graceful drape across that just it ripples good enough. You know what I mean? Like I size up in a lot of things because I want it to hang a certain way. I don't know if this is answering your question. 
My style is all over the place, but I know that it needs to be comfortable, elegant, timeless, and strong. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, yes, that, that's the lead, Juliet. Hi from Dallas, Texas. What's up, girl? Your shoe game is almost as awesome as your fabulous my personality. Girl. Thank you so much. You know I'm a shoe girl. I love, I love me some shoes. Oh, can I show you all over? I just got, wait a minute. It's very simple. Hold on. But they're so comfortable, guys. They're so comfortable. So these are from Jeffrey Campbell. I know I wasn't supposed to be shopping. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. But I went to Nordstrom. And I think they're like 130, 150. Look at the, look at, it's like the little, the little burdell with a little bit of chocolate, a little penny loafer. They're very comfortable. And I got my true size on these. I got, oh, actually I got an eight. So I went half size down, which isn't typically my normal, but they're so good. Oh, they're so good. I love, I love me some shoes, all kinds of shoes. And I feel like I like ugly, cute shoes, if that makes any sense. Um... Hello, have you on a chai? Hello, I thoroughly enjoy your content. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, ask Carlos what he thinks your style is. Okay. Carlos. Yeah. Come here, please. Please like your video helps. Oh, thank you guys. Carolyn, you're definitely a maximus for your joy. Okay, okay, that's fine. I'm a maximus. So the co the cookies want to know cool. how would you describe my style? Where you at? Right How are you going to hide like that? You look like a goblin. <laughs> How would I describe your style? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I was ready for any of your questions. Uh... <laughs> this man. <laughs> Do you want to think about it and come back? Uh, I mean... That... I mean, it, it, it's a conglomerate. It's hard to describe it because you know how to switch it up. Oh, you 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 think, okay, so you feel that I, I switch up my... Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, you have the ability to dress for the occasion and not necessarily dress for the occasion in a generic way, but dress for the, dress for the, the occasion in an extravagant, unique, and different way, you know? You, you think it's extravagant? Yeah. Okay, I'm not mad at that word. I'm just, I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know how to dress for the occasions and do it in a different way where, you know, it stands out. Okay. And people love it and appreciate it. So, uh, how would I describe that? Uh, well, you just did. I, yeah. I think that was, I get what you mean. But do y'all get what you mean? This is so cool though, babe. Like they can, it's like a whole chat. It's just like Instagram, but I feel like it's a little bit more personal. I don't know. I I like this. That's cool. It's cool. What up, YouTube world? Right? It's the cookies. Oh, what are YouTube these, cookies? These are my cookies. These are <laughs> my people's. And we're called right. cookies. I don't know, YouTube cookies. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah, that's that. That we're just talking about all the things, but Miss Globe Girl asked, ask Carlos what he thinks your style is. So, they the people do love you, you know. You are an interesting character when you decide to pop up in the videos. <laughs> but all right, well, go ahead and go go ahead and do what you need to do. I'll ask you to come back out if we need you. Thank you for your participation. Um, that is so he's so silly. I don't know what he's in there watching. Um. I saw, I saw, oh, three items. You would love a wish list video. You know, currently on my wish list, I still, you, so earlier this year, I talked about how I kind of want to become a little bit like of a bag girl. Like I want to invest in handbags because I'm not big on handbags. Like I don't, I don't know. It takes me a while to find something I'm truly connected with. And sometimes I find it difficult because we're constantly seeing the it bags, the it girls wearing the it bags. And I feel like I want to make sure that when I make decisions on something that's so pricey, that it's innately what I actually connect to. So this year I did, I did invest in handbags, but they were all secondhand. Yeah, they were all second. Yes, they were all secondhand. I bought bags that I wanted when I was in college and stuff like that. So I bought an Epi 
um, leather speedy bag from Louis Vuitton and that green. I bought the the Balenciaga City um, arena bag with the with this like the first of all first of all with the metal studs and I got them in two coats because I got them for like three hundred bucks. I was like, what the freak? So. I did that. And those are bags I've always wanted. I've always wanted a Fendi baguette. So I'm like, do I want it secondhand? Do I want it brand new? Um, and I also like the Loewe sponge bag. It's like a tote type of bag, but I need to see it in person. So I will say bags are on my wish list in that point of view. I still want the long one with the split, but that is something that's like just for evening or like events, not for everyday wear. This size is for everyday wear. The Tiffany's um, Elsa Peretti bangle, bone cuff. And what else? I'm trying to think of a third thing. This is so silly. I want some more organizational tools for my home. I really, really, because we we're, we're in a smaller space. So I need to find different ways to make use of the space and organize all the things. So on my wish list, I want some organizational units and I need to figure out what those are and what they look like. Is this a gray hair? No, it's a piece of dust. I want to go all gray. Anyway, <laughs> I was like really excited. I have some gray pieces in here. But anyway, um, that's on my wish list, but I will, I'm noting you guys want a wish list video. Um, okay. Sorry. Let me get through these more quickly. I feel like I'm slow, right? Okay. Um, what's another thing about YouTube that I like? That's the other. The algorithm will bring you different content creators. Yes, they will. I, I love letting it show me different people, right? You love Concept 26. Yes, I saw the reel she posted. Yeah, that. And that's for a, a thing she had. She has something coming up, which is really exciting. But I was really excited to do that. That was. She has such such a cool aesthetic and like she captures things so easily. Oh my gosh, Shaw is the best, the owner of Concept 26. Maybe when you go back to Baltimore, you can show some cool stuff there. I remember you said your family were neighbors with John Ward. <laughs> yes, Serial Mom is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, so when I was born, my parents lived in the building across from Drew Hill Park, which is the park that Drew Hill, the this, this singing group is um, named after. But um it was these beautiful apartments and um, we were neighbors to John Waters when we lived there. And then like maybe a couple months or up to a year later, they moved out and, and moved into a home, my parents. But my dad and John Waters would work together later on throughout my childhood where every had like a debut and, you know, he would do something to um, to uh, promote the movie in Baltimore. My dad would be there and work with him and yeah, John, he, he's not, he does not like children, but I do have a photo with him and he probably was just like, oh, just because it's Mr. Gray's child, like I'll take a picture with this child. But like, he was not, he's not a fan of kids, but he did pick a picture with me when I was a kid because, you know, we were neighbors. It's like family. Um, but I, I could do, I could do a Baltimore, a Baltimore, oh, Baltimore. Um, yes, you can catch the replay. Okay, cool. I really enjoyed the, what I wore in a week. So I'm going to do another one where I have more events coming up and then going to Baltimore also, which I'll actually be going to Baltimore with the outfit that I picked out for Baltimore. Lord. Anyway, um, thank you because Lily Silk was cool to work with also. That was fun. You enjoy the thrift shopping. You put, oh, good. I, and you know what's crazy, Shantae? There's like way more vintage stores in New York. And that was just like a little area, a little like one mile radius of where a lot of vintage stores are located. There's so many more. And I could do that probably in the spring because I ain't going to lie to you. Um, I'm scared to go outside during the winter doing all these types of like shopping videos. It's cold. It's cold. And all this stuff be on foot. But I'm going to do my best. More vintage videos. And you know what? Those videos did really well for me. Like I got way more like the community started really growing when I did those videos. So it's obviously something that you guys like to know and see the experience. A from Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore is Baltimore. Baltimore. 
vote off. Um, thank y'all. Oh my goodness. Shoe collector. I'll take that. We'll say shoe collector. We are shoe collectors. Oh, hello from Chicago. Okay, D Brooks. Yes, you're here. You're here. The loafers are everything. They so comfortable, y'all. They so comfortable. And I know my daddy had a pair just like them. Uh, I, oh, wait, I just moved the whole thing. This is, oh, y'all got a lot to say. Wait a minute. Okay, I didn't realize it was this long. You just got a cupid. I think I know the Sam Edelman ones that you're talking about because they have something very similar. And then they even have like a tortoise shell one. I will buy a pair of shoes before any clothing. Ditto. Ditto. And I need to, I, there's no more room for me to, hey, no more pairs of shoes, y'all. I have no more room for it. Um, your range of cocoa nail polish shades is always lovely. Thank you. This is actually a gel from a black owned brand. I don't remember the name, but I went to a black owned nail salon called Sweet Eleven in Brooklyn and they had that gel. I checked it though. I don't know what I was doing. It, it, it's like, why, why, why would it chip right here? Like, what was I doing? I'm always doing something. I'm always doing something stupid and messed up my nails. Um, but thank you. The shades, I will, I will start to keep track of the shades so I can share them because I am in a brown nail phase right now. And you've noticed, Cal. Cal, do you notice the nails? That's a good question to ask your partner. Yeah, it's interesting, like their perspective of things. Yes, it's eclectic, extravagant. That was a good descri description. I know, bless his heart. Because he really was struggling at first. Hey, Janie. Oh, my gosh. Hi, boo. Oh, my Lord. Adding ed edgy. Okay. I'll let him know he had a good answer. I love being a Carolyn Cookie. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I think that's a perfect description. Versatile, sophisticated, androgynous is a very good. When I was in at FIT, I had a um, I was in the business major, so I was not a design student. Even though everyone always figured, oh, you go to FIT, what are you designing? I'm like, I don't do the design, I do the business side. I'm I'm a merchandising um major, right? But I did have to take a design class, and my collection was called called androgyny. So I've always loved androgynous vibes. Yes. Um, Carlos, man of mystery. <laughs> he truly is. But he does do well, like public speaking wise. He's really good, especially in person. Like it's phenomenal seeing him like put it on, especially within his industry. Like he just, he's great. And whenever he does like podcasts or different things that he's being interviewed for and just so he's such a he's so good he's so cool to listen to um I agree you stand out I saw you on Neo Fashion Week that lace set yes I love that lace outfit oh my goodness wait why is it spinning oh I thought I thought I was losing connection oh my god it's not okay um thank you he just loves you babe yeah yeah he does yeah I love him too I get it. I think you merge different styles. That's what makes you unique. No one can put me in a box. I like that. No, I don't want to be put in a box. It's a little tight. It's a little too tight. My YouTube cookies. Um, once you organize so that you see all your things, you'll really enjoy your wardrobe. Exactly. Because sometimes when it's not organized, you just you get overwhelmed and annoyed and stuff. The last flip that I did, I know, I know I stressed a lot of y'all out on that video <laughs> because I stressed myself out for making the video and trying to do it within a time frame that Carlos would not see my mayhem and expose the shopping problem that I have that he already knows that I have, but I didn't want to make it real. So the video came across very high anxiety, but I did, I did manage to finish everything and everything's still organized since the purge. And I'm very happy with it, but I would like to see maybe more of my jewelry out because I do have a lot more jewelry. I just don't wear it all the time. And I think it's because I don't see it all laid out. So I would like to get something that will organize my jewelry. I would like to get something that will organize our hats and stuff so that that would help me appreciate and just see it better. You motivated me to start pulling my, my outfits out for the week. Yes, I love it. Now I don't have to think about what I like. And exactly. You don't have to think about like 
what's my mood? Like, what am I feeling today? Like, forget the mood, dress for the day and the moment the mood will arrive and meet you halfway, if, even if you're not feeling it. And the reason why I started doing that, I realized when I saw people doing what I'm prepping for New York Fashion Week, a lot of it was about outfits, especially for the ones that were in state. But I was like, you know what? Let me prepare my outfits too. I, I didn't do that the last two um, fashion seasons that I went to as a content creator. And I was like, I felt really confident about my styles um, that I laid out for fashion week. And I was like, you know, I need to do this more often because I didn't stress about my outfits during you know, fashion week, which is a very vain space. <laughs> you know, everyone's looking at your outfit and are you flying out? Which is, you know, but I, and I also want to call it New York fashion event week. I didn't go to shows like that. So I went to the event. I feel like it's two separate things and I love both, but yes, it is good to plan ahead. Okay. Love the, the way they squeeze, the, the way they squeeze bag. I, there's something about it and I want to see it in person. I just want to make sure that I really like it because I love it and it's functional and it fits my style because I have been seeing so much marketing for it. I just want to make sure that I like it for me because it's expensive. Their packs are so expensive, but they are really good quality. Then in Bottega, um, can we talk about your hair? I had a bob most of my adult life and every time I see yours, it makes me want to bob. You know, it's funny. I, so let's see. It's not completely the length that I want. So you can see it kind of goes in like this. And I told my hairstylist, do not cut my hair. Leave my hair alone because it oh, she always gets it so short in the back. And I, if I can't get an appointment with her because she's always very booked and busy, which is, I love that for her. But sometimes I do need my hair refreshed for content work and stuff like that. And I cannot get the back of my hair when it's a certain length. I burn my neck. So I like the length that it's at. I think I'm going to go into a lob, a long bob, and be able to like put it up. I like pulling my hair back. Like I like this type of look with the part down the middle and the red lip. But I love, I love my bob. I had a blonde bob before. She was fun, but I don't know if I would do blonde again. But she does, my hairstyles does blonde very well. Her name is Lorraine Gitti, and she's based in Brooklyn. She is able to make you're blonde, not brassy. It's ashy. It's platinum. It's a mixture of things, but we might do highlights on my hair because I am interested in highlights. So I love a good bob. Feet please now. How do I block you? Mm -mm. Let me, um, how do I, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Y'all know I'm not doing that. I want to cut my hair in a bob as well. Do it. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I think when Carlos said extravagant, I quickly thought avant-garde, like that outfit from Dylan X. That was a that was a really good outfit. I really love that outfit. It was a dress denim top that draped over the shoulder with the back out. <gasps> and then I wore it with a Jacquemus skirt that had the layers and the it was just, it was so good, y'all. I just, I love that outfit. Thank you. Thank you. Because I was like, this is what I'm going to wear. This is what I'm going to wear. And I'm proud of it. Okay. Um, shoe collection, please. Do a meetup in Baltimore. Oh my gosh. I could figure that out for the spring. I could figure that out for the spring. Let me write that down. Um, do, please tell us what you love about Tibby split toe shoe the tabby split toe so you don't get oh i listen it's it's not for everyone um and i get that to me i think they're super comfortable first of all they're all the the i have three pairs i have the classic booty like the little bit of a heel i have a pull-on boot that's very minimalist and then i have the cowboy tabby boot they're all comfortable in between my toes. Something about toe out print on a shoe. I don't know what it is. I really like that. I, I don't know why. I just like the outline of 
toes or a paw or something, right? Because Balenciaga has a pair and I have those. And J.W. Anderson also has a pair that I'm coveting. I'm, that's another piece on my wish list, right? The, <laughs> the J.W. Anderson um, paw boots. But they're comfortable. They are, in their own way, a very minimalistic look. They go with a lot of outfits, y'all, especially the flat ones, like the flat pull-ons and the cowboy boots. It just brings a little bit of flair and diff it's, it's a bit of difference. I don't know. It, I think it, if you like, you have to just be into it. And if you're not, then that's fine. I, I feel like there's a certain type of person that just likes that aesthetic. Like we just like detail. I think that's what it's just a detail and it goes with a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So I did, I wrote in the, in the chat, Aziza handcrafted rings and Waha done rings. And then my grandmother vintage Aziza. So I've, I've, I've accumulated the rings over the, my whole life. Um, but I, I like vintage ring shopping. I just sage and clean the shit out of them when I get, Home with them though, because I feel like rings carry spirit. Like I wouldn't allow anyone to try on my rings because it's a transfer of spirit. My grandmother, it's a it's my thing. My grandmother said, Don't don't mind me. Um, let me see. Is Carlos a cancer? No, he's a Sagittarius. <laughs> he's a Sagittarius. <laughs> His birthday is coming up. Please tell us about you. Oh, I, I just did. That. Okay, sorry. Um, since you want to be a bad girl, do you want any Hermes bags? I feel you need a black vintage box. Ke Ke Kelly thirty two. All the all the Birkin bags have such long name descriptions and stuff. I actually am a fan of the small envelope one that they make. I don't know the name, and that's another thing. I'm not good with that stuff yet. Um, I do want the envelope one. I think those are really cute. And I would like a, the small box, if that's what you're talking about. Like the the, the one, um, Alyssa Lenore just got one. Nori has one. Um, Karen Britchick, I think, has a small. I like the small ones. I don't like the big ones. They look heavy. Um, but I do think that that's, it's not on the top of my list, but I feel like when I get to a certain level career-wise, I wouldn't mind making the investment because it is a good resale value um, and a good like type of heirloom. I see, I see, I get it. Like I do like them, but I do like the smaller ones. I do. Um, thank you guys. Listen, you know, a little bit of Olaplex oil goes a long way, you know what I'm saying? Eating healthy, you know, doing the things. Um, thank you. You love yourself some tabbies. You have two pairs. Listen, it, do each their own. Listen, we all, some of us are into it. Some, some of them are not. Um, happy Sunday night. Everyone is so dark. So early. it is very dark, but the hour fell back. So we had a little extra hour. I woke up three o'clock in the morning to tinkle and I was upset because I did not immediately fall back asleep like normal. And I was like, am I ever going to fall back asleep? This is, this is the night to be asleep the whole time. You don't want to skip on sleep on fall back night. You don't. That's, that's crazy. Um, he's a Sagittarius. <laughs> yes. The mini Kelly. Yeah. I think you look great with it. I think they're nice. And I had, I worked with fashion file and they had me, I, they, they let me actually, I picked out the bag and I was shooketh when they said, okay, I had the envelope Birkin. What month was that? That was February. Oh Lord, we going back. I need to delete some of these things in my phone because there's so many things in this room. I think it's called the pochette. This one, not this color. This is like a salmon color. Personally, I don't really love that color on me. Um, but that was the bag they let me borrow for the content. And it was so funny because they gave me the document to sign it out. And on the document, it said that I can return it within like, it was either 14 days or a month. And I I took it out one like on a Tuesday 
made the content, went there on Wednesday, the very next day for an event, and I gave it right back to them. And they were like, you didn't have to return it back to us so soon. I was like, "Mm -mm, ain't no way. I'm responsible for any scratch, scuff, stain that appears on this bag. Hell no. That was that thing was so expensive. I, I was scared to be loaning it. But they're so trusting of it, of influencers. I'm just like, child, no, couldn't be me. You're going to get this bag right on back. I'm not going to mess this bag up and you're going to charge my card for it. $9,000. Absolutely not. Um, yes. What are your thoughts on the Phoebe Philo launch? So I feel that I am... I I have been a fan of her work prior, right? When she was with Celine and only with Celine. I appreciate her aesthetic. There's some pieces that I have from that that era. Um, So this collection, to me, it looks like a lot of the Celine Phoebe Fido era. So I feel like as an introduction, I think it was okay. The price points... I think it was a little ridiculous that she's charging $8,000 for bags right out the gate. Like she's swinging and elbowing us right out the gate with those prices. That was a little crazy to me. Um, The price point on the sunglasses, typical, pretty normal um, for designer brands. So I wasn't surprised about that. I did like the dress or the pieces that had the fringe because that was the only thing that kind of really stood out that looked very different amongst everything else that she's ever designed. And I personally liked a lot of the shoes because I am the type of person I like awkward shoes. I just do. Um, There's a pair of shoes that I noticed on her marketing, like on other photos in the beginning of like on the front of the website. There are some shoes that I had my eye on that remind me of the road and Louis Vuitton has a pair just like them. But I would actually prefer them from her. And... Overall, like I was kind of like, I love the design aspect. I think that she's a great foundational designer. Like she, she gets the details, she gets tailoring, she gets structure, the detail of the pants that split open in the back, beautiful stuff. The price points were just a little, like, I was like, oh, okay, I'm not the customer right now. I'm just not. Um, But I want to see the second drop. I feel like the first drop was okay. Like it was, it was kind of gave me a little bit of mediocre because it's, it made me feel like we've seen a lot of it before. And I was annoyed by the pricing, but I do want to see the second drop with the other shoes. I'll probably get those shoes. Um, but yeah. Are you hosting for the holidays? No, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. We might do something for like Thanksgiving because we have a lot of people who are from out of town that are now living here that are in our circles and I might do something with them. Um, But for Christmas, I'm actually going home without him. I want to be up under my mom and my dad. Like I just want to have Christmas with the two of them and I don't want to see anyone else. Like I just want to go home to Baltimore and I just want to do that. So no hosting. It's already stressful with all the other work that I got going on. I can't do it this year. Do you do styling workshops in person and virtually? So I'm actually going to be doing a styling session with the Mango Store on Fifth Avenue on the 16th. So I'll be posting more information about that um, this week. But I do, I will be doing a styling session with clothing there. And then in the future, I want to do more things like that. And I do one-on-one virtual um, styling sessions, like with people that have questions about things that they had trouble um, styling on their own. Like they they need statement pieces to go with more essential pieces. So like I do it more one-on-one. I haven't done a complete workshop, but I do think that what I would like to do, let me know how you feel about this. I noticed that YouTube keeps asking me to create some type of subscription channel. Child out of it. Listen, how would y'all feel if I did a monthly like fashion curriculum subscription channel? Does that make, did I just, did that make sense? Because it's in my head 
And I don't know if that came out right. How would y'all feel about something like that? What is this? Girl, where did that come from? Was that on my shoulder the whole time? This piece of dust? I'm strange. Um, but yes. How do y'all feel about that? I went to Fashion File showroom three weeks ago and it was gorgeous. It's very nice in there. It's just, it's just so nice in there. You just want all the things. Um, you like Tibby designs too? Tibby's, I like Tibby. Very, very chic, very minimalist. To me, it's kind of Phoebe Philo-ish. So I wonder how Amy is feeling about Phoebe being back on the scene. I wonder how all the designers are feeling about Phoebe being back on the scene because I feel that old Phoebe Philo is what Bottega is doing. It's what the new Gucci is probably going to start doing because I can see a little bit of his tendencies. Matthew, what's his name? Matthew at um, Bottega, uh, Daniel Lee. He, I feel like they get really inspired off of her. So I'm wondering how everyone's feeling about her being back. Um, for the prices she was charging, her stands deserved better. Her former underlings, yeah, Peter Doe, Daniel Lee are doing much better for cheaper. That's why I was like, those prices are a little crazy, girl. Um, oh, I want to make the styling event at Mango. So it is, and it's going to be after the store hours. So it's going to be from 8 to 10 p.m. So we get the store to ourselves. Um, oh, yes. You know what? It's not an actual Mango partnership. So it's just a location partnership. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold back what I want to say. So after the event, I will share how this opportunity came to be and how it went beyond behind the scenes. Because this is the first time I'm doing something where I'm hosting an event and the actual corporate is not involved. It is just on a store level, if that makes any sense. And I'm a little nervous about it, to be completely honest. But I feel like my y'all, my tribe here, who would be able to attend, like it would be a good, it would be a good session with us. Like we would have a great time. You know, I think it would be cool. The price point's a lot more palpable. It's a lot more fun. They have a lot of great pieces at that location. So like, I want to do it that way. I'm looking forward to doing it that way. Um, are you going to stream it on YouTube? I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if I would be able to, like, I feel like it would just be like, being a fly on the wall from that point of view to live stream it because we're expecting people to come in and being styled. And I don't know where that can be set up. Like I I'm probably going to go there tomorrow to see like what areas of the store we'll be using the most and how that would look like if I were to like do Instagram live or YouTube stream, but it's, it's a, it's an idea, but my laptop com camera sucks. I don't know. I got to see. I don't know if I would do that for that for the first one. Um, uniqueness and flip. Thank you. I know Amy is probably like, what the <laughs> She's shaking in her boots. Um, love the idea, but curious on what, what the curriculum will entail. Like maybe focusing on styling certain silhouettes every month or how to actually figure out personal style and maybe doing it where we're auditing. Like I can audit someone's Instagram page and look at their style from the, if it's even displayed, right? Or maybe could, could people go live with me? How does that work? Okay. I don't want to press nothing else. Hold on. I don't want to mess anything up, but like I could, I could think about it a little bit more and see what it would look like. But I, I was thinking of like doing a monthly video where we would cover certain information regarding fashion, because whenever I work with clients, they always leave the situation saying, I didn't even think about it this, this way. I never thought that I could pair it this way. I learned more about how to, um, why is there ads about the run? Did that happen before? That's weird. Um, I didn't even know that that was for my body type versus this not being for my body type, like that type of thing. So we can talk about stuff like that. Um, yes, curious. Okay, tell us more. So I'm thinking that type of way, but I want to think about it a bit more thoroughly and just have like a 12-month program, like one thing every month. I love Joseph, but you did not commentate. 
that who's Joseph? Aldazur or whatever. Who's Joseph? The price range was has always been high, but sales are worth waiting for. Wait, Vanny B. I might do like a like a recap video for it for the event. I can zoom it. <laughs> I can zoom it. Okay, that's a good idea. I saw a red faux leather skirt that you might want. Is that a dated look? Here's the thing. I feel like what makes an item dated. Oh, we've been on for an hour. I'm not gonna stay too much longer. Oh my gosh, I don't want to keep y'all. Um, I feel like Things that are dated immediately are things that don't suit you, the rest of your wardrobe. Like it doesn't interchange well. It's not the fit that you would normally go for or style in a style that you would normally go for. But I feel like it depends on the silhouette. What type of skirt is it? Is it a mini skirt? Is it a midi skirt? Is it a maxi skirt? Is it asymmetrical? I feel like asymmetrical pieces can get dated very quickly. Whereas like you know, something that's fitted to your body, mini, midi, maxi. Those are something, those are silhouettes that are timeless and very like personal. Like I would go for a maxi red skirt instead of a mini skirt because I don't typically do mini. It has to be a very specific mini skirt. So it is a pencil midi skirt. I feel like that's a classic style. And if you feel like red is a color that you are always pulling for, or if that's like the color that you love, you wear normally, I don't see nothing wrong with getting that. But see, like we could be doing something like this every month where like we could be taking fashion questions or like different things that we feel hesitant on and discussing it thoroughly. Oh, going live in conjunction would be dope. I would try. I would try. Um, who are you all the time still? Who are your all-time style icons or inspirations? Well, at the top is Tracy Ellis Ross, first and foremost. Love me some Tracy Ellis Ross. Um, I also love most of Rihanna's looks. Um, Bianca Jagger, Betty Davis. Um, so funny, actually... Claire Huxtable, Felicia Rashad, but Claire Huxtable style. Because Felicia Rashad, her style outside of that show is very like, she wears like a lot of um, like moo-moos and stuff. Like very graceful things for her, but not, not, not that I would get inspired off of. Who else do I love to tap into? Um, hmm. There's this girl, I think Berlin, her name is like Maja. Let me pull her up. But she has such a cool, elegant, minimalistic style. Marjan Carlos is one of my other style favorites. Like her, I cannot. Her name is Maja Wei. And she recently has done like a collaboration with Zara. Like she's one of the first influencers that I noticed like actually have a campaign with them. If y'all could see that. Her page is really, like I just like her effortless style. Um, But she's another girl that I'm like, oh, I like her style a lot. Um, Tracy eats down, yes. <laughs> oh wait, I skipped some. Joseph, Joseph the design of the brand. Um. Let me pull it up. I may know who you're talking about, but I'm I need to like put a oh yeah. I mean I do like their knitwear. I think their knitwear is pretty dope, but I don't look, I don't see them enough. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think they have really great, they do have really great elevated basics. Um, and it looks like their textures are really on point too. Oh, wait, I'm missing some things on. But yeah, I'm not I'm not big on that brand. Who are okay, got that. Uh best brands for elevated basics, Tibby, Cost. 
<gasps> not my light giving out. I told y'all I'm going to die. That means I'm about to finish up. Um, Elevated Basics. Yeah, Tibby Koss. Uniqlo. Um, who else? For like underpinnings and stuff, Skims. Sorry. I know some of y'all do not like when I say that, but I honestly... They have great materials that last long because I'll be washing the shit out of my skin stuff and they still just look so good and new. Um, who else? Some Zara stuff. Some Zara stuff can be elevated basics. Um, but Ray, the matches fashion brand. Um, there's a lot of them. Maybe I could do a video about that. Elevated basics brand. All right. Um, yes, Diane Keaton. Yes. Yes. Betty Davis. Yes. Love her. Um, Diane Keaton. Yo, I love Diane Keaton. She's so quirky. I love her. Moose. I don't know Moose. Um, I think you would love Audrey Lombard's style. She's only on IG. June Ambrose. Yes. But you know what? June, I love June's style for her. And there are certain pieces that she wears that I get inspired to look into and wear myself. Um, but I just love her energy. I really just be loving her energy. Oh, Audrey looks cool too. She looks fun. Um, I'm following her. You know what? Instagram hides everybody from me. I can't. Like one of my friends dropped a shirt the other day for her collection. I was like, I saw her on FaceTime today. I was like, oh my God, I love that shirt. She was like, you be in your own world. You did not see this. I'm like, I really, I need to make notification things for everybody because I, I don't see shit. Excuse my language. Um, She is an icon. June is an icon. Jenna Lyons. I, she, I, her style was great for her. I'm not inspired by her style. And that might be really like, <laughs> that might be a, uh, controversial for me to say. I think her style was cool for her. I mean, I thought it was really dope that she wore jeans on the reunion episode, but I did not get inspired by Jenna Lyons style. I get inspired off of her boss energy. That's about it. That's about it. But I, I'm not wild by her style. Um, to be honest, I uh, love Diane Keaton style. She's kind of like, the I, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so cool. See black women dressing like that. I think it's so dope. The Annie Hall. Uh, first time seeing your channel and I'm shook by your resilience. Yes. I used to get that. I looked like Sierra a lot, especially when I was in high school. Um, I just got some oversized shorts from Cost. Oh my God. Yes. And the quality is really good. Commando is good for basics. I love their underwear. <laughs> so I do wear their underwear just so y'all know. <laughs> Um, big cash miss no like moose moose meat. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, Bernard. But no, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> if that's not fashion, then no. Um, do I wear sneakers? Yes, I do wear sneakers. I feel like not that often, but the sneakers I've been wearing the most. Um. I got a pair of Sakai's that actually a client sourced for me. She found them at an outlet and sent me a picture immediately because I told her I always wanted a pair. Sakai's and Adidas, like Sambas or Gazelles. Like I like those. And, um, but yeah, I love sneakers. Sneakers are cool. Hmm. But not, I appreciate you, but your comments are a little off, just so you know where I stand. And the last person that said something about feet stuff, I deleted them. So thank you. Um, Jenna isn't for everyone, it's not blasphemous or anything. I just I just feel like there's an overall agreement that her style is super iconic. And I just feel like the woman, Jenna Lyons, is iconic. I just don't see it for the style. Like I've, There's pieces I'm like, oh, that's amazing. But it's a lot of button downs and jeans. 
she always wears her, her chest out. So she likes her chest out. No big money. Okay. Thank you, Bernard. Um, Natalie Martin on YouTube is one of my favorites. She's an icon. Okay, I'll check. You know what? I know who you're talking about. She's from Canada. She inspired one of my videos. Oh, my God. She inspired one of my videos. The one before discipline was shopping video. What video was that? I don't even remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> but yes. Oh, this is it. Yes, this is my first time doing a live, Sonia. Oh my gosh. But I am about to get up. I've been on for like an hour, girl. I've been on for an hour. Um, <laughs> I don't know what moose meat means. But I think he understands. I don't know what he's talking about. It's okay. Um, <laughs> Emmanuel Alt. Is that the um, creative director? Who are we talking about? Um, one of the jokes on Roni was that half her wardrobe is buttoned down. So you know, it just and but that's her. That is her best uniform. I like Sai style, and I like some of the pieces Uber wore. Yes, I love Sai as a character on there. Bernard, that's it. I don't know what you're doing. You talking about Beaver? I got to get you out of here, honey. That's it. Hmm. Anyway, that's why I like when my demographic is women, third gender, or gay men. I, it's like, that's my world. Francais poop poly to No, I don't speak French, even though I just read that and I understood. <laughs> Bernard, no, I got to get you out of here. Put him in time out. That's that's I didn't even know they had that feature. Leave me alone, Bernard. Okay. Um, after watching your spring summer wardrobe swap around, I've been praying for a bigger home and <laughs> please, I really want one. <laughs> we will get there at some point, but like my gosh, <laughs> he needs to go. <laughs> Y'all, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like it. I um, I sometimes it happens on the Instagram lives. Like somebody will put like inappropriate emojis. And I'm like, hey, get out of here! I'll be showing them like I feel like I'm showing them with a broom, a broom or like a handkerchief. Like get out of here with that, and just like weird comments. And it might be a language barrier thing, so I don't want to like completely just like out it. But sometimes I'm just like, read the room, honey. It's not the same page. You're not on the same page. So, yeah, you would you would enjoy a monthly chant. Okay, cool. Only because I want to see your worship. Yeah, we would like it would it would be much better to like see it in full view. I have very I'm lucky to have a slight walk in closet. I'm lucky to have a slight walk in closet, but it is a bit limiting with the space. It is. It is. So I would love to have a clothis as well. If you do a live again, you need a moderator. What does a moderator do? I don't know what that was. What does that mean? He knows what he's doing. If you're going to maybe get a moderator, is that a, a secondary person or is that like a thing that I can add? Y'all, me and technology moderation activity timestamps pop out chat participants huh. like could i wait let me click on something oh add as moderator okay and someone that kind of like navigates the things right okay oh i'm pressing too many things um I'll, I'll definitely do that next time. I'm in agreement with Mexica. You need a large room for a closet. I know. And our last apartment was a two bedroom, and that second bedroom was my closet. That was a good time. I had really good lighting in that apartment. I miss it. Um, soon as she pressed that button, all messages from it disappeared before I could even blink. I, yeah, I, I, it said delete or to remove. So the, to the block island, they go. Um, they maintain the chat. Bernard will be praying for you. We'll be praying for you, Bernard. Annie. And I'm sorry. And that was funny. 
it's a person who helps keep the comments in line, take care of people like Bernard. Oh, I nominate myself to, not, to moderate this chat. Okay, Miss Sonya, Miss Sonya, I'm going to let you know when I do the next live and then I'll sign you because Miss Sonya will, she'll, she'll gather the people um, and keep the trolls out. When, what's your next video on? So the next video I'm thinking of doing either a vlog, like a weekly vlog or the other ideas that I had. Um, I write them down. Uh, da, 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 YouTube videos idea. I was going to do, because it's colder now in most of the country. I know my West Coast. Actually, some of my West Coast clients told me that they do need coats right now. So maybe this will work. I wanted to cover the coats that I've accumulated living in New York because New York has just had an abundance of coats in our wardrobes. Okay, number one. Number two, I wanted to go over certain styles that are timeless that... Um, one should have, like, depending on your style, like if you're a pea coat person, if you're a long coat person or a puffer coat person, just discussing different ones and styles that are available that are really cool. Um, that are my suggestions, I guess. So I was thinking of doing a coat review, um, and coat suggestions for my next video. I'm also going to be, I want to do a home improvement video where I'm putting together this piece and reviewing this piece from Amazon for you guys. I'm also going to be changing some of the artwork in the apartment and adding in some organizational units. So I wanted to do that as an idea. I want to do outfits for the week for the, the week that I have many events to go to. Um, so another one is coming up. I'll do those like maybe once a month. And then a lot of y'all asked me to do a video about how I do my eyebrows, which would be one of the shortest videos ever. So I'll do it, but it will be short. Um, and I want to do a video covering some hot takes on fashion news. Um, so I might actually do that one first because, you know, the Phoebe Philo thing just came out. The Skins and Skins and Sorosky and the NBA collaboration. I do want to discuss that. Um, what's happened to smaller niche retailers and brick and mortar sales and um, basketball tunnel style. I want to I want to I want to talk about it and I want to rate some of the looks. So I do want to do a news ish type of one. And those are the, those are the ones that I have. Oh, and I do want to do the Baltimore trip. Y'all, I'll be having a lot of when I when I'm when I'm trying to go to sleep and stuff. That's when I write all the ideas that I have for YouTube videos. But and then I also had the suggestions you guys mentioned in this chat. Wish list video, Baltimore video, maybe another vintage shopping video, um, elevated basics brands, like a review on those. Maybe I could do that. Um wait, wait, wait. Um, Oh, wait, uh, I'm from BK2. I understand like the club space. Yes. Did you answer the question about men's fashion? <coughs> what what question <clears throat> on men's fashion? Hello? Huh. I'm choking on something. Men's, I don't, what question was asked about men's fashion? I did miss it. Um, okay, y'all like the coats, the outerwear thing? Okay, good. <clears throat> you just bought a bunch of coats. Mango has really great coats. Yes, they do. Amazon pieces. Okay, great. Loved your vlog and also the videos that go deep into the fashion business, a different viewpoint of fashion that you don't get. Okay, cool. Yes. All right. I appreciate that. A vlog in Aruba. We're going to talk to my mama about that because how dare she not include me on her trip? Like, why can't I go with you? I can get my own ticket, but why can't I go with her? Like, I think that's shady. Um, Black Friday sales is a thing for me. You know what? I, so here's the thing. Black Black Friday sales is already starting. And sometimes I wish it wasn't like that. Because even as a business owner, I felt pressure to start my Black Friday sales at the top of November for the last few years. I'm not doing that. The, that week of Black Friday, I will have a very special collection for Noir Bud. And I will also have some pieces to sell on in the 808, some clothing pieces that are on their way. I have a beautiful maxi skirt. I have a beautiful coat coming in. And I also have a two-piece set that will be great for holiday attire. attire good Lord. <clears throat> so, but I'm waiting to the week of Black Friday to do that stuff. So, I mean, I could do 
a wish list video for Black Friday sales. I can do that. Um, but I feel like so many brands started last month. So it's very oversaturated and just very salesy. And me no likey that. I don't like that. But I could do a wish list about what to get from the sales that I'm looking at. Um, yes, for fashion news, hot takes. Okay, great. You're such a strong woman with an aura. Most of relish we don't ever change. Thank you. Sorry, I'm wearing a color you dislike in profile. No, I, you know what? I, I don't mind pink. I, I don't wear pink often for me. Is that is that the color? Don't 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 mind me on that. No, I love I like pinks on other people. I just don't particularly love a lot of pink on me. Some pinks, some pinks. And now I feel like the whole Barbie thing is like slowing down. So we're not so inundated on pink, but like now it feels okay again. Because at first I was like, that's enough with the Barbie. Leave me alone. But I do love pink on other people. Those are, okay, you like the subjects. Yes, the coats. Okay, oh yes, I like basketball too. So I'm here for the time. Because they, they're they they're serving the looks in the tunnel. And some of them are not. So I don't like that. But we'll, we can talk about it. Um, thank you. And you know what's funny? My brow starts here. This one, this one is short. When I was 18 years old, I went to a place that I got my nails done. I did my eyebrow wax and she took all of that. So I fill this and a little bit here, but I do have hair here, but there's mostly no hair right there. Um, so we can talk about the brows. I'm not a shoes person, but I want to know what color shoes should I have? Red, silver, et cetera. Okay. So shoe styles and colors that can work with any. I got you. I could I could talk about shoes, girl. I could talk about shoes. Mm. Um, she asked, "What you think of men, today's men's fashion?" You know, I do like a lot of it, and I think about times when we used to wear business casual to the clubs, or men would wear jorts and jerseys and sideways caps and we have come such a long way there's a lot of things that i like about men's fashion altogether. i think it's um it's fun when i get to shop with carlos for his wardrobe you know that type of stuff but i um i do enjoy men's fashion would you like for me to cover a certain aspect of it no, not Amazon, overrated and overexposed. No, so Amazon, this Amazon, um, um, this thing, what is this thing? It's a vanity. It's like a bookshelf with like a built-in vanity and a chair in the thing. Y'all, I'll, I'll show you what it looked like. So I'm gonna put it together. I don't wanna do like a lot of Amazon review stuff on here. Like if there's something that comes up and I'm like, y'all, y'all might want to get this. I'll, I'll share it and whatnot, mostly on Instagram. But like what I want to show y'all is this, if it's worth, you know, purchasing. Girl, that is not the one. What is that? What is that? That's not what I ordered, girl. Stop playing with me. Oh my gosh. I mean, why is it showing up completely different from what it actually looks like? Ugh, I'm going to have to show you guys the smallest picture ever because it's not showing correctly on the actual. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. So it's this, it's like a, van oh God, you can't see it. Whose page did I get that off of? Either way, it's a it's it's a it's a furniture piece that I want to put together and see if it's worth the, the you know the two hundred dollars that I spent on it. Um, I think looking at fashion from the seventies, eighties, nineties, and seeing designers today, inspiration as I have things from then could be could wear I could wear now. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Elmeo and Jorts, remember those? Um, like the maxi cats idea. Personally, I love 70s fashion. Yeah. 
about fashion from the past. Okay. And maybe how it like affects us now. Fashion past video. Okay. Have you done a shoe collection video? I have. I have done a shoot. I did one earlier this year for spring. I did one for last year's winter collection, but I could do another one because obviously it's been updated. <laughs> I'm proud of myself, but then I'm not proud. Um, uh, da, 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 da. If vintage shopping is so huge, why do we have why do we have to purge our closets? I, I don't know. I because purging your closet is basically getting rid of pieces that you're no longer feeling connected to that don't bring you joy. You're not excited to style it. So getting rid of things in your wardrobe is just making space for the things that you would rather have and you realize that you're not using. So someone else would love it and use it way more than you. That's that's the, the blessing of purging. Because um, sometimes we do impulse shop and it just happens and we're like, oh, shit, I don't know what to do with this. You know what I mean? So that's why a lot of people purge. I love a vintage. I, I rarely purge my thrifted vintage pieces because they are so unique and beautiful. And no, I have not found that damn skirt that I had thrifted. I think I made a mistake and put it in my heap of clothes that I went to go sell at a thrift store. And I did not watch them go through the pile because I thought I went through the I thought I went through everything, but that skirt was long lost. And I thought I was going to find it when I did my wardrobe flip. And I sadly did not. And I'm so, so sad about it still. But I really purge thrifted items. Um, yes, girl, I saw Steve Madden had a version of the Ghani sandals in the sneak. Steve Madden don't give a damn. He will copy everybody and be like, go ahead and sue me. I have lawyers more lawyers than you. He don't give a shit. I just found out the other day he owns Dolce Vita. I didn't even realize this. He owns a lot, but he don't give a shit about copying and pasting. He really doesn't. He's a jerk, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um, a lot of stuff in your closet may not be being worn just because it no longer... Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Answering. Um, more black owned and small businesses. I can do that. And honestly, I do. I actually tag a lot of small owned businesses, especially because you know, a lot of things like that I can't do in the LTK. So I always put in the description and I tag those things. And I always have, um, I always mix in. Because I'm always wearing something from a small business or designer that I personally know or just am a big fan of. Um, but I, one thing I will tell y'all, because I don't know if anyone said it yet. I remember a few times some, some, some people have asked me to do videos on dupes. And I am not big on dupes. I don't purchase a lot of dupes. I don't know where to get the good dupes from. I wouldn't even know where to start on dupes. I'm not a dupe purchaser. So I don't think I would be the best source of information on making a video like that. And I don't want to force it because it's not something I naturally know, nor I connect to. I'm just not good with it. And I'd rather have something like, for instance, YSL makes a loafer that is this color that I always wanted, right? But what I like about this Jeffrey Campbell loafer, I'm gonna wash my hands when I finish. To me, it rem the color of it reminded me of Saint Laurent, right? The toe box reminds me of the Prada loafer, which I own a pair, right? But to me, I'd rather get something that has slight inspiration or variation of a designer piece rather than getting an exact dupe. The only thing I'm actually considering purchasing are the Bottega earrings from Amazon, but I'm not good with dupe stuff. I'm just, I don't know. Like I would only want to suggest like really good, like leather goods. Y'all get what I'm saying? Cause I just, I don't, sometimes I see it like the, the DH gate thing. I'm like, well, how does it feel? Like, does it, 
who are they going to know? Like, do I care if they know? I, I don't care if someone knows, but it's like, I, I know. I know. I don't want it. I'd rather go, like, there's a sling bag that uh, the row sells that's like $1,300. Girl, buy them buying on getting a sling bag. Okay. I went and got one from Cost that's much bigger and it just looks more chic. And it was what, like 40 bucks. And I also got one gifted by Uniqlo and it's the same thing. So it's like that type of thing, but like not the exact design. So you know what I mean? Um, I feel you. I never get rid of my vintage stuff. Exactly. I'm sad about that. Think about this skirt. Yo, this skirt really left an impression on a lot of us. <laughs> And I did reach out to a designer to like see if she could remake it, but it's just not gonna be the same. It's not gonna be the same, y'all. Oh my gosh, I get so sad about that damn skirt. I never made a mistake like that before. That really made me upset. Um, I purge my closet a few times a year, but I keep my quality, well-made vintage pieces. Yep, it did look so good. I did. At least I have a video of it. Mm. How do you feel about your new pleated skirts? I think they're high maintenance. They are high maintenance. Your style. What new pleated skirts? Which one are you talking about? I have a new pleated skirt. What pleated skirt? Can you tell me what I have? I don't know what you're talking about. I already forgot. I'm tired. So I'm not thinking so clearly. Um... I'm not big on dupes either. I think Janie does videos on dupes though. Okay. Stevie Jenkins. I love Jeffrey Campbell. Because they actually design. Like Steve Madden, they don't design. Jeffrey Campbell, don't you be that like they design. They have fun. But Steve just don't give a shit. We are cookies. We are not dupes people. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I want you to do what you naturally like purchase. Thank you. I just, I I don't want to force it, you know? Like, I get it. I understand why people really dig it, you know? But I am I just feel like that's a whole other realm where I would prefer before doing anything. Like, I, I need to do a lot of research in that. And then there's also, like, the, I come from, like, my career upbringing, is in luxury fashion. I've only ever worked in luxury luxury fashion because once I worked at one place, then it it was a qualification to work at another. I never really went to high tier mid street. But when I worked in in when I was in Baltimore and I was in high school, I had two jobs after school. I would work at Baker's Shoes and I worked at Hollister. Right. But after I left home, I was only involved in the luxury spaces just by chance, honestly. And the dupes thing was always like a it was like a ick thing for people in fashion because it just wasn't the the authentic kind. But I understand why people are introduced, because honestly, the cost that goes into even the authentic pieces are so low that the markup is like, girl, you robbing people. Right. So I understand the financial reasoning behind getting a dupe. And sometimes they are really just good dupes and great leathers and great detail. And I, and I get that, but it's like, there's just this little thing that I don't really, I'm not drawn to it because of my history of where I've worked. So, and I don't want to ever feel like I'm forcing a content topic on any of y'all. So um, I just bought the Jeffrey Campbell over. They're so good. They're so good. Enjoy them. Um, yes, I don't like dupes or knockoffs. Yeah, it's a, it could be. A, it's a little uncomfortable. Just I don't know. But when I see somebody and they tell me that they have a knockoff, and I'm like, I would have never known. I don't be knowing. Um, how do you feel about people buying replicas, fake design? I, I don't see. That's that's the thing. I feel like to each their own. And like, I don't, I'm not mad, especially if it's good, especially if it's really, half of these women in New York, they have Birkins, they're not real. So you know what I'm saying? But for me, I would want, I would want the full experience of an essay at Hermes calling me talking about, I got a bag for you, sis. You know, like that's, that's what I would want for me. <laughs> 
But I don't knock other people for it. It's just like, for me, I don't feel like going through that experience. I don't feel like doing the research. I don't feel like thinking second, like having second thoughts to myself. Like, I know that it's fake. It's, it looked fake. It looked fake to me. I don't know. Like, it's a me thing. I don't care about anyone else. It's, but I'm also impressed by when people get them and they're really good. I get very, like, I, I get very excited about it. But I just wouldn't do it. Um... You favorite Carrie Hilson. She's cute. Thank you. <laughs> I'm speaking about the new pleated skirt on the market this season. Um, I have a few pleated skirts myself already. And I have like a skirt that's half pleated, half not. I think they're a cool aesthetic. They're fun to, to mix with. You can get into a blob really easily. So you have to be careful about the silhouette on top and keeping it curvy. Oh my gosh. Speaking of curvy. Can I show y'all a closet that I just got? And then I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Hold on, hold on. Um, Can you post the link for the loafers? Oh, yes. I have a link for it. I think I have a link for it. Hold on. Let me see. Mm, mm, mm. Wait, let me find it. Hold on, guys. I got it from the restroom. I'm not getting an LTK link. I'm just getting it. Um, Jeffrey. This, I feel like it's slower on my computer. Hold on, y'all. Let me get it on here. Because I think I made a regular thing for it. This is so silly. Ugh. But what style is this one? I found it. It's the Colleague Loafer and Link. But yeah, oh, let me, um, here, I'll send it. What the heck? Oh my gosh. <laughs> This didn't work. Here we go. I just want to make sure that it's the right color. Colleague loafer. Okay, here we go. Um, I feel like I don't know how to freaking use my computer right now. I feel crazy. It's because I'm tired. It's because I'm tired. Why is it so slow? Here, that's an LTK link. There you go. Um, oh my goodness. Wait, wait, wait. Can you explain why the YSL leather jacket is seven thousand dollars? I can't. I can't. It's probably a lot of hand done. It might be a lot of hand work in the sourcing of the leather. Leather is very expensive to work with, to source, to put together. And they probably hand stitched most of that pattern. And then it's YSL on top of that. So it's like a 600% markup. Child, I, don't, I love it though. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I, I do love it. I have the Royal Banana Sling, but it really is good quality. I bought the cost version first to make sure I really liked it. And that's a smart thing to do. That is a smart thing to do before you make that full on splurge. Good job. I like that, D Brooks. I mean, Keisha P, sorry. But yes, I do like that. D. Brooks, I do like that jacket. Glenda, um, I have a hack for pleats. Let's turn them inside out and on the inside of each pleat iron on some wonder web. I have many pleats skirts in doing this. Oh, is that what you were asking me about it? That went over my head. <laughs> I'm slow. J. Crew makes some nice quality pleated skirts. Agreed. 
Now, those are double waisted jeans are a good dupe for the Loewe. Yes, they are. And on, the Loewe ones aren't even available. There's a couple brands that made a double waist. Even that brand St. Art has a double waist jet, um, denim. Girl, please, there are fake Birkins parties, but they, be, they, they, they love themselves a good old fake Birkin. I can't afford a designer and I don't mind. My, my style is unique. Yes. Love your rings. Where did you get them? I bought a Zara dupe of your beautiful silver chunky bracelet. I think it's zinc, but it looks good. Listen, do what you need to do, honey. So Aziza handcrafted, Waha Dunn, and vintage. These two are vintage, and then Aziza handcrafted. Um, I don't mind a dupe for certain things. I like some of the dupes. These don't copy the luxury items. But they're more like inspiration pieces. Yeah, that 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 I like too. Um, what is Wonderweb? Wonderweb sounds fantastic. Sounds like I want to put Wonderweb on everything. Um, oh, thank you for tuning into the live stream. Already posted a link five minutes ago. That's what a battery would do. <laughs> See, I don't know. <laughs> Glenda is also. Because I I, that took me a minute, child. I couldn't get it together. Um, I bought my skirts from J. Crew. I just Googled, I don't want to say it, but Amazon. Yes. Yeah, leather is very expensive. I went to a factory in London. It's very, those factories are amazing to go through also. Things from the UK, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm hmm. It's the sourcing. They only have but so many animals, natural plants, et cetera, to produce leather, silk, cotton, wool. Yeah, not natural, natural um, materials. That's why fast fashion is so cheap because the fabrication is manufactured slash endless. Yeah. And some of it is um, not safe to wear on the body. I remember I bought two pairs of jeans from Fashion Nova and there was a hang tag on it that says it has cancer causing materials in it and I never wore them after I tried them on. I was like, I'm not going to put cancer causing things near my pooty tang. Mm -mm. Not, not back there where the booty hole brown. I don't need that near that. No, I don't. Mm -mm, honey, I, do, I don't want that. Um, I also think you have to think about cost per wear and some of this designer stuff is so fast looking. I don't think it will last for me and my aesthetics. So to get a, I think you mean dupe, to wear for one or two seasons. I understand that. I can definitely see gray on you. I love gray. I love gray. It's my last name. <laughs> um, that's the correct handle. I just, I don't, y'all, I don't want those cancer causing things in my butt. I just can't. I'm no snob, but fast fashion is a no-no. I honestly don't want to see millions, zillion people wearing what I have on, which is something that does happen with fast fashion. It does, unless you style it really cool and, and personalized fashion, you know? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, you have such a cool spelling. I wonder, CJ, CJ, Wurkland. Oh, I wish I knew how to pronounce that. Where, is, where are you from? That name sounds, it reads very cool. I wish I knew how to pronounce it out loud and, and felt confident about my pronunciation. <laughs> um. Someone from years back found rat's foot. I remember that. They found a rat's foot in the leg, like in the stitch, and not just a pair of pants, also in a dress they found it in the stitching. That was somebody that was getting fired, and they was like, I'm going to mess this whole company up. <laughs> Ew. Could you imagine the smell of it? No, nothing unsafe touching any uh, <laughs> Oh, hell no. Rats were in the stitching. Yeah, it was in the, um, like near the zipper. It was terrible looking. Would you ever live in another country? Yes, I would live in London. And I, though I've never been to Switzerland, Tina Turner lived there. So if she can live there and be happy, then so can I. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. I would go there. I would go there. Celia, 
sort of Norway. Ah, so like Celia, Celia. Am I saying it correctly? Norway. Norway is another country that is super safe. One thing that I found very interesting about them is that they leave the babies in the carriages outside in the cold while the mothers go and dine. Because there's no crime out there. Like there's you, there's certain places in this world, like I think also there's areas of Asia. Children are always protected by the community. Everyone knows that there's a child out on their own. It is everyone's job to take care of that child, look over them to make sure they're getting to where they need to get to. No one touches or harms them. So I know that in Norway, I saw a video about that and I was like, wow. And I mean, you are really getting that baby some tough skin in that cold weather and the carriage just taking a nap out there while mommy is inside having a wine with her friend. I don't know how I feel about that, but it's interesting. And the other thing, isn't Norway also where there's a canal where people swim to and from work or like float to and from work? That is so cool to me. I thought that was very interesting. I would love to live abroad, yes. Um, Switzerland's great to raise children. Oh my gosh, I just, if Tina say, you know what I'm saying? No, London is overrated. Come to Manchester. We're friendly up north in England. Listen, I love London. I love London. I really felt comfortable there because it's it, kind of like New York, but more posh, more proper. <laughs> People have manners. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I dig it. I dig it. Okay, good. Celia, I'm saying it correctly. Thank you for helping me pronounce that correctly. Um, clean air. Yes. I love me some bougie ass clean air. Give me clean air anytime. Ugh. See, I can't breathe straight here. It's just it's crazy. I would never, I could, I would never make it work <laughs> to work. <laughs> you would float somewhere else. <laughs> you would miss your exit. Child boo. But I just thought that was really cool. But um, and the funny thing is, I've lived in Aruba in my childhood. I would never live there because it is what, 21 miles long? That's, that is a small ass. I, I, I get bored immediately. After one week of being there, I'm like, it's time to go. I done seen all y'all about four or five pounds already. Everybody on the island, not just my family. <laughs> I can't. I'm still trying to imagine the swimming to and from work. Yes, and like they put, they put their clothes in these waterproof bags and then swim to and from, change on the, the shore, and then go about their business. And I also like the fact that a lot of those countries are more bicycle, like transportation focused. Like my mom went to Holland a couple months ago and she was just like, I cannot believe how many bikes there are. Like, I love it here. And I'm like, yeah, girl, they ain't about that CO2 like they even have a time limit. Like you, there's like certain vehicles shouldn't can't be out on the road after a certain time of day. If I remember correctly, that's what my aunt told us. Um, wait, what, what if you can't swim? Then you can't take the canal. You you got to drive or bike bike it. Twenty one miles. Everybody knowing your business exactly, exactly. Love me some Aruba. I really love Aruba. It there it is a special place and everyone is happy there because everyone's always drinking but it is a happy island okay but i get bored after a week i just can't i just can't and i feel like there's not a lot of healthy food there everything is imported you know what i mean so is it super fresh not so much so sometimes I get frustrated when I go there because I'm like, okay, I love the cuisine that we eat here and I love it all, all around, but I can't eat red meat like this back to back. I can't have fried foods like that back to back because I take, it'll take, first of all, I know I'm not the only one here. And this is where you're going to see me be real transparent. I know I'm not the only one that travels and then it takes me four days to take a poop. If I'm already having issues going to the bathroom and I'm eating a lot of fried food, cheese, and red meat, I'm not pooping for 14 days. 
like I try to do the exercises to move the things around. What I'm going to do the next time I travel and have to take a flight. I'm going to make sure my probiotics and everything is on a certain regimen and I'm going to take a bath when I get there because someone said when they take a hot bath, when they arrive to their destination, it helps them with their flow. I'm going to dry it out. Let me know how it goes. Um, I love the dry heat of Aruba. Me too. And I love the breeze in Aruba. Um, you can say see Aruba in one day. Yes, you can. People seem to swim a lot here. It's too cold for me, though. Yeah, I could. I can only imagine. I'm like, dang, what happens when it's like actually cold season? I can do the bicycle thing. The swimming is an immediate no. I love it. We went there in 2020 during the pandemic. That was actually when the island kind of reset. Before the Panini, Aruba was a little ran down and she was a little dusty. Like she was dirty. And then the white sand beaches came back after lockdown. And I was like, y'all got to slow down with the with the tourism thing. That's what that's what that means. We got to slow down a little bit. Um, Aruba closed down after that. No, yeah. Mm hmm. I know I'm not alone because everybody, the bowels are <laughs> my bowels are the same. <laughs> then on the one day we get ready to leave, the stomach issues start. Yo, then then it's ready. Then it's ready to go, go, go. I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to leave now. I, I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom. I need, I need to poop. Where else have you been? Um, I have been to. So I've lived in Aruba. Obviously, we've been to Curacao. I just don't remember it. I've been to Dominica, Venezuela, Mexico, different parts of Mexico. Um. I feel like I haven't been to that many places. I've been to Paris, been to London, um, Bermuda. I feel like I, I want I do want to travel a whole lot more. I feel like I haven't seen enough outside of the States. Like I just, I want to experience more. I haven't even been to Holland yet, you know, so I want to go there. Um, thanks for the information. <laughs> really, I didn't know that. Traveling is great, but it can throw off your regularity. Yes, it can. <laughs> Which place was your favorite? Out of all the places I've been to, besides Aruba, obviously, I truly loved my visit to Paris and London because I was alone. I traveled there by myself. Like I visited with my family in London. I stayed with them, but I traveled around, went to Paris all by myself. And that was a very special experience for me. It was like a coming of age. It's like a womanhood thing that I stepped into to be able to travel by myself, like book the trip, buy my th myself nice things, go on a shopping spree, see the, the area. You know what I mean? That was a really great experience. It's one of my top experiences. And then I also really love Tulum, even though a lot of people have been there and it's like, I get it, but I did love it there. It's very peaceful there. Um, Guadalupe, French Caribbean, haven't been there. Heard many great things. Egypt is a place to go to. Yeah, that would be dope. You are coming to Ghana next. I would love to. Miss Sonia, Miss Sonia, I would pull up. If you want to go, you want you want to go over there to your house. I'm pulling up. Sonia Mills, my cousin, asked me today to go to Ghana next year. I love this. Are we all going to Ghana? I traveled to Milan alone for New Year's, and it was the same. A coming of it. It's a very. It's like a. It's something about it changes you for good. For it, it's it's yeah. I think every woman should travel solo once in their life. Agreed. Totally agree. Yeah. And that was actually a trip I was considering moving to London. I actually went there to visit family, see the sites, and job search too. Like I met with a few companies that I wanted to work with there. And when I came back, I actually met Carlos. So I was like, I, I ain't leaving. <laughs> I ain't going. I'm not, I'm not leaving. <laughs> but listen, y'all, I'm getting hungry. And I, I know this man did not open up my donut box and leave it open so it can stay quick. Not my donut box being opened over there. Um, oh, you're going on a solo cruise next year. I love that. 
Yeah. I've heard many great things about Ghana and like big group trips. And yeah, I think that would be cool. I would like to see if someone's like hosting like a big thing there. I've always wanted to go to a country in Africa. Which country? There's many. Like I would love to go to Ghana. I would love to go to Lagos. I would like to go to Egypt. I would like to go to um, Abidjan because I have a lot of good friends from there. And they just, they're, I love them. But I would love to go there to different countries. Um, even Kenya. Um yeah, I would love to. You're going for a month. I love that for you. Yes. Oh, I can't wait for me to be like, I'm going away for a month. Goodbye, United States. <laughs> I would love that. Oh my gosh. Zanzibar, Tanzania is definitely on the list. I love that. I heard many good things about Zanzibar. Where um Morocco? Morocco. I want to go to Morocco. That would be fun. Um, yeah. Maybe as things get like I, I can feel that the ceiling in the space that I'm in, like my career, it's it's breaking, it's expanding. There's a lot of things on the horizon. I'm very excited for it. I'm excited to work with different brands and take on new opportunities and um, grow my business. I haven't been to Spain, but I heard many good things. You know where else I'm, I'm going to go to Spain and I also want to go to Italy where one of my good friends is from. She's from Napoli. I want to go there because I want to visit her family and I want her to show me around. Like I like to see the local, local stuff. How cool would it be to do a switch like that in a movie, The Holiday, I could lend you my flat and, oh my gosh, this small but awesome, like a tree hut. Oh my God, we could switch places. I love, that movie was cool. That idea is actually really cool. I'm not mad at that idea, Celia. Off to Spain in two weeks. Oh, pandemic, I love that. Please go there, beautiful. I, yeah, we have a lot of places to go. I feel that in, in due time, like sooner rather than later, Carlos and I will both be in places in our careers where we can afford to like take trips and do them the way that we want to do. You know what I mean? Like really experience these places and not feel like, you know, worried about finances or worried about the work that we need to get back to. So I feel like we're, we're getting to that place. And I know that the job content creating will also create opportunities for me to be able to go abroad or like, you know, do brand visits. And it's like, I can't wait to like, I get an offer to go somewhere with a brand, even if it's to Miami. I'm like, oh my God, this is the first of many. Like, <laughs> I'll be so like tripped out. Like, it'll be so dope. But I know like I'm speaking into existence for those authentic connections to happen but also like just those opportunities because there's so many places I would love to go to. So many. Toronto, Italy, Panama, Colombia, Barbados. Yes. Best friend they Tamar sing songwriter would love to go. I love that. Speak it. I am. I'm speaking into existence. Yes. I and that and it it comes with like the territory of like being a content creator. So I'm just like, yo, whatever happens. And I, I mean, there's a lot of things like I'll get and I'm just like, oh, no, this isn't really aligned with my style or my audience. Like, you know, maybe you could work with this person instead, but not for me, you know. So there, there are things that I'm just like, no, thanks. But I know that there will be more things that I'm really aligned with that will start coming my way, especially next year. I look forward to seeing next year and like what that's going to look like. God is walking with you and you carry yourself in a manner that is humble. Your dreams are so close. Keep the faith. I will keep my faith. I will keep my faith. I pray every day. And I thank you for all the things. And I also, I, I pray for opportunities and I pray for the strength and for the wherewithal and the patience to keep the opportunities um, healthy all, every day. Do you ever feel pressured to like fit in or like wear a mask in order to be liked as a content creator? No, mm -mm. if it feels that way, I don't do it. The only thing that happened since I've been doing this is I was working with a brand that 
they they made it very known that they liked my approach to creating and um they never said anything directly to me but i started to notice in like some of the briefs that they noted not to wear nails that were very like extravagant super long or or take away the focus from the actual product in your hand and at first like i felt slighted but it wasn't directed to me, but it's like overall, like you have to respect the brief and how the brand wants to be represented as well. Right. And for a while, like I was just like, okay, I don't want to do anything with that. Then like, I feel like I always wore my nails long and super designed, but I did start to notice that I felt like the nails, it made sense. Like if I'm holding a product, you know, my nails can take away the attention from the product you know what I'm saying? So I understand the idea of it. But also when I'm working with beauty products, having long nails is messy. So while at first I felt uncomfortable with that statement being seen and I was like, oh my God, so like I have to stop wearing my long nails for these people. Like, what? Well, that's my style. I actually started to adopt this short base, like clean cut style because it actually is easier for me to work with the products in a way that makes me feel sane. So at first I did feel a little uncomfortable. I didn't feel like I wanted to force myself to be fit in and I wasn't making content with them for a while because of that. But then I realized, I was like, actually, you know what? This does make sense and I don't mind it. And there's ways that I can still have fun with designs on my nails when I want to, but I never really like forced myself to like do that. And whenever I did have them reach out to me doing any of the work, I would like, I would hold the product like, like, like you could not see my nails. I'll be like, yes. So here we go. And they would never see my nails because I was not taking my nails off. You know what I mean? Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. I have family in Barbados and Honduras. I go often. I love that. Bay Barbados. It will happen for you because you have such a beautiful spirit. Thank you, Marcy. May you always be blessed and happy and healthy with many adventures. Yes, and yes on the healthy. I just want to feel healthy all the time. Um, thank you for spending two hours of your evening. It has been two hours. Oh, my gosh. Okay, guys, we got to go. It's well my heart hearing all your interaction with your cookie crew. Yes, where, where do you see your channel in two years being and doing? I would like to still be consistent on this channel. I would like for you know, it to transform whatever's happening in my life. I would hope that God has in the plans for me, um, elevating our commitment as a couple to be married, as well as being a mom. If that's in the cards for me, that would be really cool. So obviously it would grow into sharing that, that experience, but it will always be my authentic experience at wherever I'm at in life and being consistent for sure. Um, that's why I see it in two years. I hope that answered it, if, if that makes sense. Um, oh, you enjoyed the live. Thank you. This is so cool for the first live, y'all. This is so fun. But um, but all right, I could we could probably do this once a month and do the things and talk about whatever y'all want to. Maybe I could have a hot topic for the next time. I, I definitely was winging this one. Because I figured y'all would like tell me your thoughts and mindset or whatever, you know, like y'all, y'all definitely communicate really well with me. So I figured we would have a good kiki anyway, but maybe I'll do like a different topic next time where we can still kiki about. But yeah, this was fun. I'll see y'all later. This was fun. I appreciate your channel, Sense of Humor. Thank you. Catch you on Insta. Yes. Tomorrow I'm going live on um, at 7 p.m. Eastern. I do it every every week on Monday on Instagram. I arrived late, but thanks for doing this on YouTube. Thank you. Good night, y'all. All right. I'm going to end it, and I'm going to figure out how to, what it does when I, when I end it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll see y'all next time, and I'm going to try and see if I can save this and post it, right? Okay, y'all. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for your support and thanks for watching. And thanks for talking to me. Y'all have a good night, okay? All right, y'all. Let me figure out. Okay, I'm gonna, I hope I don't break nothing. I don't want to break nothing. Oh my God.
your stream will stop immediately. You will no longer be live. Oh, okay. Okay, y'all. Bye.